Hello everybody, Manix here. Got another classic tabletop knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe, hit that little bell notification if you do not want to miss any future knife, EDC, gear, gun videos and reviews. Feel free to support me on Patreon, link in the description. But, as always, you watching is support enough, so I thank you so much. But just keep in mind, this stuff costs money, so if you'd like to throw some support at me, that would be appreciated too. But anyway, this is on the CRKT Fossil. Now, you can't take a look at this knife without thinking it's interesting. It's a very, very interesting knife. I want to say it's beautiful. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. But you might not. You might think it's just kind of funky and weird. I think it's really, really cool. And on top of being a very cool looking blade, a kind of unconventional, funky looking knife, it's actually extremely functional too. And that's where my excitement really excels at. I like it when companies do weird, cool things to their knives, you know, go for an odd design or something. But if they're not functional, if they're kind of just like, they sacrifice function for form, that's when my excitement, and I think most people's excitement kind of drops. But if you can nail both, you can make an extremely functional knife as well as good looking and interesting. That's awesome. You got a home run in my book. Specs overall length is 8.88 inches. Triple eight on their blade length is 3.96 inches. So just a hair under four. That is a long blade. It's a long knife. Handle length is 4.92 inches. The weight, according to CRKT's official website, is 6.1 ounces. 8CR13 MOV blade steel. We have a satin finish on there. You can notice the striations from the grind marks are in different patterns depending on which grind you're looking at which is kind of cool, whether that was intentional or not. It's a nice little design. It gives kind of a triple tone blade on there from the three different grinds we have. Flipper knife has the IKBS system on there, so it's on a ball bearing track, which makes it extra smooth. Thumb hole right here, interesting shape. And it's rounded on the edge too, a little bit. So it's a little bit less sharp. It's not like a Spyderco hole that's cut at 90 degrees. We have a little angle on there. So it keeps it a little bit less sharp, a little bit more comfortable to open up, I should say. Jimping on the spine right there a little bit. It looks like a third of an inch or so, but it, it's actually very functional. You can really lock your thumb in there. Stainless steel handle scales with G10 overlays. So I should say the G10 is actually the scale right here, the scales, and then the stainless steel would be the frame because it is a frame lock, not a liner lock. Yeah, a liner lock would be if it were the liner of the knife, but this isn't really the handle frame. This is just a scale on top of the frame. So most knives would go liner, frame, then scale, or sometimes people say liner and then scale. These are just scale overlays on top of the stainless steel frame. Cutouts right in there, little drill holes. You see my finger poke through there, that's interesting. I like the hammered kind of pattern on the G10. It's brown and black, by the way, very earthy looking, very beautiful, very gorgeous. And of course, on the stainless steel as well, we also have that hammered pattern, which is really good looking too. Little cutouts on the back here, almost like jimping, I would say. Not totally effective, but whatever. Aesthetically, it looks cool. Probably an FRN black backspacer down here too. I love backspacers on blades. It's really good looking. Goes well with the black on the insides of the hammer holes. I should say hammer indents, little craters on the G10. Pocket clip is a loop over design tip up right hand carry only so it is not an ambidextrous knife unfortunately but it's a perfect pod clip it does have a stone wash finish on there it looks like works very well there's not going to be a whole lot poking out of your pocket especially because it's loop over but something like that is what you're going to see very functional kind of stubby i like stubby pocket clips i like all pocket clips for different reasons but if you're familiar with the older version of the fossil i don't think it had a different model name but it used to have a funkier kind of pocket clip, which I thought was cooler personally. It kind of mimicked and reflected the whole design they were going for of a fossil, like dinosaur bones kind of looking knife. And that I thought was cool, but maybe they got some complaints. I don't know what happened. They just went back down to a more standard looking clip. Not as cool looking, I don't think, but it's more functional for sure. So I guess I can't complain there. Pretty cool. Really fast again, because of that IKBS on there, we have a good lockup. No up and down whatsoever. Almost no side to side. It's, it's extremely strong. I probably adjust that out because of that IKBS on there. I can get the knife as tight as I want, probably, and not have to deal with having a stiff action on there. That is the one problem with typical knives. On the pivot area, you can get it as tight as you want to not have any side to side play, but then, the, of course, the problem is going to be opening and closing the knife is going to be a bitch because it's going to be a lot slower 
because it's tighter. But when you have the IKBS system, the blade rotating on ball bearings, you pretty much eliminate that. So you can have it as tight as you want almost and not have to deal with the blade being stiff. So that's really awesome. Flicks out every single time, no wrist movement needed whatsoever. You can also use the thumb hole on there as well. Works just fine. You can flick it out with your thumb, but you're gonna have to practice a little bit. It's not easy, it's kind of an odd shape. Functionally, I do not like this thumb hole. The advantage is, because it's not like a straight up circle, you don't have to create a huge thumb ramp or anything on here on the blade. Not that I think that's a disadvantage, but as far as its design go, it is slimmer. It's almost like an oval, just with a little extra cutout on this side right here that the oval protrudes into, I should say. It kind of mimics a dinosaur eye. This kind of looks like the skull of a T-Rex or something. That's kind of what it's going for. So the patterns on here, the design, the G10 handle scale on top of the frame on there, the hammered look, at the shape of the blade, this eye hole right here for the thumb hole, is, is just beautiful. It's a really good, cool looking knife. If you like the way it looks and you want to go buy it, I would just buy it. I don't think you're going to be disappointed with its function either. Retails at $99.99, but you can get these for about the $60 range. There is also a smaller fossil. I forget the model number offhand, but this is the larger version. Smaller version is pretty cool too. That actually kind of fits the nice philosophy of use very well as well. If you're looking for a knife that's just a little bit more covert, a little bit more classy, a little bit more simple, going to get less attention, but also still going to get attention because of its wacky design right here. Uh, that knife would be really cool too. But I'm a sucker for big knives, so I just picked the big one anyway. So it's comfortable. Got a big old finger choil right here. We have some cutouts right here. We have one little, little cutout right there you can kind of see for your middle finger. And then a bigger cutout that's even longer for your ring finger. And then your pinky rest right down here and even then I still have a little bit of extra room right there so I could scooch down to here if I wanted just a little bit more reach for whatever reason. Uh, I would not scooch up here, you're just too close to that cutting edge. But we have a nice clean crisp cutout from the ricasse of the blade to the edge right there, that's cool. Really like this recurve on the blade, that's absolutely gorgeous, it's going to accelerate the slashing motion. This is also going to be a pretty good piercing knife because we have somewhat of a spear point tip on here too. It's pretty thick. Kind of heavy. No, just above six ounces. Let's just give this a weigh on my scale anyway. This is what I like to do in my videos. 6.09 on my scale, so they're probably actually not that wrong there by assuming it was 6.1. Now that I'm saying they were assuming that, but uh, functionally, yeah, it's a little bit heavy. For this size, I mean, you could get knives about the same length with similar function for like around four ounces or so. So two ounces heavier, but we're talking ounces, we're not talking pounds. So honestly, I don't really care about weight on knives that much. Now if I'm backpacking, I'm carrying 200 pieces of gear with me, yeah, I'm gonna watch the weight on each item. But if I'm just carrying a wallet, a flashlight, possibly keys, phone, knife, I, I, I really don't notice that much. It's not that big of a deal to me. So grippy, you know, not like a G10 textured grippy, like, you know, the typical this you know, on a skyline when it's kind of a sandpapery grip. It is grippy though. It's not slippery by any means. So we do have some grip on the knife. We have some pretty distinct choils on here. We have a nice wide old cutout. It looks like a lopsided shark's mouth took a bite out of this or something. But it is very comfortable. It actually fits the human hand or my hand pretty well. Relatively thick, including those scales on here, the overlays. So that kind of bevels it a little bit and adds little bit of thickness but there's quite a lot to hold on to here and again that jimping that little pink little portion of jimping that's really functional actually works really well too I, I like the blade I like the spine on here just the different cutouts they put on here in the design it's just interesting it's not all for function a lot of it is for form again especially this hole right here but if you consider this knife just a flipper and you put no cutout right here I guess nobody would really be complaining anyway huh so I do consider this to be a flipper knife, but you can open it conventionally if you wish. It's just kind of tricky. You gotta kind of scoot your hand down a little bit. It's not exactly the best executed thumb hole for function, but it works very well for flipping. And it's still there if you want to open it slowly. You don't want to scare anyone. You don't want them to think you got, ooh, a knife with a spring in it. Uh-oh, it's more dangerous now. So, so really good looking, it carries very well despite being on this bumpy scale. It's actually okay. The tension's great on the pocket clip. And I like that covert look. I like the loop over clip right there. The IKBS just almost sells it for me, man. It just it, it flicks so easily. No wrist movement needed. Man, it's perfect. Almost any position, you can just 
boop. It's a really good, cool-looking, beautiful knife, and it's very functional, too. Defense knife? Yeah, sure. Why not? Got a lot to hold on to. It opens up quickly. It's not going to fly out of your hand or anything that's not too slippery. Jimping on the flipper, too, by the way, in case I did not mention that. Mimics the jimping on the spine of the blade there, too. For about 60 bucks, you can't really go wrong if you really like the design. We do have HCR 13 MOV blade steel on here which is not fantastic, but it's adequate for the money. Uh, for 60 bucks, you can get knives with slightly better blade steels, I will admit. However, you won't get this design, and I'm pretty sure what else they do to the knife, the, the scale right there, and the kind of proprietary look it all has, I'm sure that costs just a little bit more. So if they throw on a better blade steel, you'd be paying even more for it. So it, you do have to sacrifice a little bit of function for its form, Overall, it's a very good-looking knife. If you like the way it looks, you don't mind spending the extra 15 20 bucks or whatever it is in comparison to what else you can get for function out there on the market. Get it. This knife is awesome. And if it's a little bit too big for you, maybe you're a lady, got smaller hands, or maybe you're a man with smaller hands, maybe you're a kid with smaller hands or whatever, you can step down to the smaller version too, save the 10 bucks or whatever it is. So, yeah, that's it. Beautiful knife. Circuity Fossil.